we have seen the derivatives of some basic functions. So now we're going to look at the derivatives of products and quotients. So the first thing we're going to do is the derivative of product. Now, unfortunately, what happens is if, if you have a function f of x and it's equal to the product of two separate functions, uh, which we can label any name that we want, but here we use uppercase F and uppercase S. And of course, if they both of them separately, the derivative exists, then it's not the derivative of F times the derivative of S. Okay, so I'll write down the side, right? So if you have Y is equal to F times S and you do Y prime, this is not equal to F prime times S prime. Okay, so we wish, but that's not how it works. How, what, how it does work is you have to use the product rule of derivative, which is that if you take the derivative of a product, it's going to be the derivative of the first one times the original second plus the original function of the first times the derivative of the second. Now, because it is plus, um, it doesn't actually matter if you do this one here that I'm underlying in red first or this one here that I'm underlying in blue because we know that 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 4 plus 3. But the reason that I always personally do the derivative of the first one first is because of what will happen when we go into the quotient rule. Okay, so let's uh, put it to the test. So we're going to use two different methods to differentiate f of x is equal to 5x squared times 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. So the old method, right, so I'm, I'm going to underline the product here, right, so this is your first function f and this is your second s which is why it's the uh, the product of two functions however what we learned before because both of these have a this has a power of one you can actually just distribute 5x squared so one method I'll just call it method one would be to first distribute the 5x squared which would give us 15x to the fourth minus 25x cubed plus 10x squared and then we can just take the derivative by using the product rule so f prime of x will then be equal to 60x cubed minus 75x squared plus 20x so again I'm doing this because here the power is 1 so I can distribute if the power wasn't 1 remember that powers come before multiplication in orders of operation now the other method is of course to use uh, the product rule so we're gonna get some practice so I'm gonna write f which is 5x squared which then I'm gonna have f prime which is gonna give me 10x and s is my second function, so I have 3x squared minus 5x plus 2, which means that s prime is going to give me 6x minus 5. And so then I have that f prime of x is f prime s plus f s prime. And if you want, you can draw a little diagonal here to remind you which one goes with which. And so this is going to give me 10x times s, which was 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 plus 5x squared times s prime, which is 6x minus 5. So then I'm going to clean this up. So I'm going to distribute the 10x to both, to all three, I'm sorry, not just to both, and the 5x squared to both. So that's going to give me 30x cubed minus 50 x squared plus 20x then I'll distribute the 5x squared so it's going to give me a positive 30 x cubed minus 25 x squared and so when I combine like terms I have 30 x cubed and 30 x cubed both positive so that will give me 60 x cubed I have negative 50 x squared and a negative 25 x squared so that will give me a negative 75 x squared and then a positive 20 x and if you take a look, right, these are the same as they should be. Now, in situations like this, I would personally prefer to use method one. I think it's easier because the power is one, so you can just expand it. However, the issue is that you can't always do that, which you're going to see in the following problems. So it's good to also have a backup, right, with the product and to get some practice out of it. So let's take a look at some other situations where expanding is not going to be an option. 
So we want to find the derivative of 4x cubed e raised to the 5x. So I have my first function here, which would be 4x cubed and e to the 5x. And we know that in this situation, there's absolutely no way to combine the two. Okay, so this is a situation here where the product rule is the only way for you to take the derivative. So I have that f is equal to 4x cubed, which means that f prime would be 12x squared. And then I have s is equal to e to the 5x. And remember, I'll do it on the side, right, that if you have e to the cx, the derivative of that is CE to the CX. So that means that S prime, oh, let me go back to blue, S prime is going to be 5E to the 5X. Okay, so Y prime is going to be F prime S plus FS prime. And again, if it helps, you can do a little arrow. So that's going to give me 12X squared times E to the 5X plus oops, 4x cubed times 5e to the 5x. Okay, so I'm going to re I'm going to combine the 5 and the 5 and the 4 here. So I have 12x squared e to the 5x plus 20x cubed e to the 5x. But then you can factor this, which you're going to want to do because sometimes you're going to want to work with the function. So you always, it's better to have it simplified and in factored form. So the first thing I want to notice is that you have two terms, right? You have the term that has 12x squared e to the 5x, and you have the second term, which has 20x cubed e to the 5x. So you want to see what's common to both. So first of all, something I see that's common to both is definitely the e to the 5x. So I'm going to be able to factor that out. So I'm going to put that e to the 5x in the front. Now I have a 12 and a 20, and the greatest common factor of 12 and 20 is 4, so I'm going to factor that out. And then I have an x squared and an x cubed, so the greatest common factor of that is a squared. Right? You can only factor the smaller amount. So what do I have left? So if I factor a 4 out of the 12, that would leave me a 3, so I have 3. If I factor an x squared from an x squared, all of those are gone. And if I factor an e to the 5x out of e to the 5x, all of those are gone. Plus, if I factor a 4 out of 20, I'm left with 5. If I factor x squared out of x cubed, I'll be left with 1. And I took out the whole e to the 5x. So this is my derivative in factored form, y prime. Okay, let's do another one. So find the derivative of y is equal to 6 to the 5th ln of x. So again, I'll underline just to make it a little easier if it helps. Use colors. This is my first function. This is my second function. So f is equal to 6 to the x to the fifth. 6 times x to the fifth. Sorry. f prime by using the power rule is going to give us 30 x to the fourth. s is equal to the ln of x, which means that s prime, the derivative of the ln of x, is 1 over x. So then I have that y prime is equal to f prime s plus f s prime. When you're first learning a formula, it's good to always write it over and over and again. Even if I just have it above, just keep writing it. So this is going to give me 30 x to the fourth times the ln of x plus 6 x to the fifth times 1 over x. So 6 x to the fifth times 1 over x. Now this x and this x can cancel to give me 4. So I have 30 x to the fourth ln of x plus 6x to the fourth. But again, I have two terms. Let's see if I have any common factors. Well, out of 6 and 30, 6 is a common factor, and I can take out a whole x to the fourth. So if I take out 6 out of 30, I'm left with 5. I didn't take out the ln of x, and I took out all of this. And remember, when you take out everything, you're not left with 0, you're left with 1. Because if you were to factor, distributed back in, you have to multiply it by 1. So this is y prime. And again, one of these situations where you, here you would have to use the product rule. You don't have a choice. All right. Let's look at a different type of problem. Find the values of x where the tangent line is horizontal to the graph. So I have f of x is equal to this. So here, um, 
I'm going to have to again use the product rule because one of my function has an x and my other function has e to the x. So there's going to be no way for me to combine those. So I have first, remember, to do these types of problems, you find the derivative because that's the tangent line. You want to look at the slope of the tangent line. So I have f is equal to x minus 3, which means that f prime will be 1. I have s is equal to e to the s, which means that s prime is equal to e to the x, one of the most simplest of derivatives. So then I have that f prime of x is equal to f prime s plus f s prime, again, rewriting it over and over. So f prime is 1 times e to the x plus x minus 3 times e to the x. So this is going to give me e to the x plus x minus 3 times e to the x. I have a common factor of e to the x. So when I factor it out, I'm left with 1 plus x minus 3. But I can combine some terms, right? I can combine the 1 and the negative 3, which will give me x minus 2. This is my derivative. Now, the key in the question here is asking you when the tangent line is horizontal. And what you need to remember is that when the tangent line is horizontal, that means that the slope is 0. The slope is the derivative. So you need to set this equal to 0. This is one of the situations here where you... This is when you need to have it in factored form. Otherwise, it would be very hard for you to solve when it's 0. That means that either e to the x is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0. To solve for when e to the x is equal to 0, you take the inverse of both sides, which would be ln, which means that x would be the ln of 0. This is impossible because when you have a logarithmic function, ln of x, x has to be greater than 0. Okay. The reason for that is because there is absolutely no x that you can raise e to to give you back 0. If you put in, remember, e is about 2.7, so if you put in positive values, it will get bigger. If you put in negative values, it will become a fraction, but it still would not become 0. And e to the 0 is 1. So this is impossible. You can put it in your calculator. You see you're going to get an error message. However, I can solve the second one, and it gives me x is equal to 2. So there is only one x where the tangent line is horizontal, and that x is equal to 2. Let's finish off by doing a business application. So a manufacturer determines that t months after a new product is introduced to the market, x of t, which is equal to t squared plus 3t, hundreds of units can be produced and then sold at a price of p of t dollars per unit. Express the revenue for this product as a function of time. So we have that r of t, oh, that's not going to be helpful, r of t is equal to the number that you sell times the price that you're selling it at, which means that you're going to have x of t times p of t, both as a function of time, which means that you're going to have t squared plus 3t times negative 2t to the 3 halves plus 30. So here's my function, my revenue function, as a function of time. Now part B asks, at what rate is the revenue changing with respect to time after five months? Is revenue increasing or decreasing at this time? All right, so we have again here two options of how we remember rate. Let's talk about that first, is derivative. So you could use the product rule or you could distribute everything and use the power rule. For practice on the product rule, I'm going to do the product rule. So I'm going to have that f is equal to t squared plus 3t. f prime is going to give me 2t plus 3. Then I'm going to have s is equal to negative 2t to the 3 halves plus 30, which means that s prime is going to be negative 2, bring down the 3 halves, Subtract 1, which would give you 1 half, and then the derivative of 30 is 0. So this would give me negative 3t to the 1 half. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to have r prime of t is equal to f prime s plus fs prime. So that's going to give me parentheses 2t plus 3 times negative 2t to the 3 halves plus 30 plus t squared plus 3t 
times negative 3t to the 1 half. Okay, you could clean this up. However, I'm going to give you a tip. Because you're looking at a specific t, there's no reason for you to really clean it up because you're looking at a very specific t. If it asks you for the revenue function, yes, then you need to clean it up. But if you're going to plug in something anyways, you might as well just plug it in because it, does, it doesn't matter if it's going to be in a simplified version or not. It should give you the same number. So that's going to give you 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3 times negative 2, 4 to the 3 halves plus 30 plus 4 squared is 16, 3 times 4 is 12, negative 3 t to the 1 half would be the square root of 4. And here you can use your calculators and what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get 8 plus 3 which is 11. So this is going to give us 11 times this is going to give us 14 plus 28 times this is 2 so this will give us a negative 6. And so what that's going to give us is 154 minus 168 which is going to give us negative 14. So is the revenue decreasing or increasing? The revenue is decreasing because the rate is negative and it is decreasing at about $14. So not really a good situation of four months. Hopefully it will improve as the months go by.